Welcome to the St. Michael Easter podcast series. My name is Mary Lessman, and I'll be leading our meditation today. Our theme this Easter is Come, Follow Me. Jesus calls us to follow, and together we turn that call into acts of love. May your Easter season be filled with the love of Christ. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 to 16. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So the women left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings, and they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You must say, His disciples came by night and stole Him away while we were asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy Him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story is still told among the Jews to this day. And the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. Here ends the reading. As I write this reflection, we are two weeks into the Russian invasion of Ukraine. It is a surreal experience to follow this tragic display of hostility and brutality. With World War II being quite before my time, I imagine this is what it must have felt like for folks around the world as they received news of yet another invasion by Germany into a country, in complete defiance of that country's sovereignty and right to self-rule. The world has quickly rallied around Ukraine and their people, inspired by their bravery and shocked by the devastation to their homes and families and lives. And the world's collective economic might has been harnessed to make this open aggression as costly to Russia as possible. We've been inspired by the determination of the Ukrainian people to fight occupation, even unto the threat of death. And we've been heartened by the unity with which global governmental bodies and companies have acted. One of the fascinating aspects of such an event in our day is that media, and especially social media, has a faster and bigger impact than in the past. Information moves quickly, images even faster. All players in the conflict are strategically working to frame their narrative and control the story. And so we've gotten better at getting information out faster before false stories can be circulated to confuse people and undermine the truth. It's still a hard fight to get out the truth and provide evidence so folks can verify for themselves, to provide proof that undercuts those who would peddle stories that have no basis in reality. All of this was swirling in my mind as I read our passage from Matthew for today. We are in the first week of Easter season, and so our passages are focused on the event of Jesus' resurrection. Today, we hear Matthew's version which has some interesting differences from the other accounts. In Matthew, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary come to the tomb not to anoint or tend to Jesus' body, 
but to see. They are seeking a deeper understanding. They want to know the truth for themselves. Guards are stationed at the tomb. Even though Jesus was dead and buried and his followers had abandoned him, the chief priests and Pharisees are still nervous. And so they ask Pilate to secure the tomb so that Jesus' disciples can't steal the body and claim that Jesus has risen. As so many politically motivated folks do today, they were looking at the event from all angles and trying to eliminate or mitigate any claims that might conflict with their official version of what happened. Pilate agreed, and so guards were stationed at the sealed tomb when the women arrived. As they watch, an angel descends from heaven and rolls the stone away. It's a dramatic entrance accompanied by an earthquake, just as at Jesus' death. In fear of the angel, the guards become like dead men. It is ironic that the living become as dead just as the dead are revealed as living. The women, unlike the guards, don't faint. The angel announces to them that Jesus has been raised from the dead and he offers to show the women physical evidence to support his claim. Come, see the place where he lay. Then he sends them off to tell the disciples that Jesus will meet them in Galilee. But back in the city, the tomb guards have told the chief priests the whole story. And so the leaders are in propaganda production mode. They spin a tale about Jesus' body being stolen, and they bribe the guards to go along with it. They promise them judicial immunity if anything comes out. And we're told this fake news is still believed in some quarters to this day. Here's our lesson from all of this. Jesus spoke many times of his rising on the third day. These women trusted and hoped that what Jesus said was true, and they set out to see for themselves. Because of their hope and faith, they became eyewitnesses to the action of God to raise Jesus from the dead. Not only as witnesses to the angel's action and evidence, but as ones who personally encountered Jesus as they went on their mission to share the good news. Jesus' word is trustworthy, and our hope in him is vindicated. And the power players of this world will go to any lengths, even outright falsehoods, to maintain their power and undermine change. Contrast the hope and inspiration of new life in Jesus Christ to the machinations of mere humans trying desperately to control the narrative. The resurrection of Jesus is an earth-shaking, life-changing, hope-fulfilling truth that no amount of manipulation or stagecraft or fake news can suppress. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.